Hello, this is Professor Joe Fermanino once again, and I'm here to talk about uh, ethical theories. Uh, for this video, I'm going to talk about utilitarianism. So, but before we uh, begin with utilitarianism, let me uh, discuss to you two forms of ethical analysis. These are the descriptive and normative uh, analysis. Uh, Another term for analysis would be descriptive uh, study or uh, research. So these are the forms of researches in ethics or in the field of ethics. So descriptive ethics and normative ethics. Now descriptive ethics is more suited to empirical science as it aims to discover what moral beliefs are held by a given society, social group, or organization. It does not prescribe or assess uh, the moral soundness of any ethical system. It objectively presents or describes what kind of values people come to have. So in uh, descriptive ethics or descriptive study of ethics or descriptive research or ethical research, uh, one example would be a cross-cultural analysis of human values or comparative analysis of, let us say, American values and Asian values. So that is what is done in descriptive ethics. So like what I've said, uh, this is being done in empirical sciences, uh, most especially in the social sciences. So you may think of history and uh, sociology, political science, uh, what else? Uh, even in psychology, they are talking about morality but their, uh, say, approach or method or their kind of study is descriptive study or uh, research in ethics. So, but uh, another uh, uh, form of ethical analysis, study or research is normative ethics. No? Normative ethics is or seeks to discover norms that ought to guide our actions. So when you say norms, we mean standards. It could be in the form of rules, laws, principles, and uh, precepts or concepts, but more on uh, rules or laws or standards. Now, normative ethics is a theoretical but also a practical uh, uh, approach, study or research because it tries to produce uh, practical knowledge about how we should conduct our lives. So that is normative ethics. Now, if I may uh, take the term norm, uh, when we say the word norm, like what I said a while ago, we are referring to rules, laws, principles, concepts, etc. But in normative ethics, if we are to explain it in the vernacular, the term appropriate to this would be the word uh, in, in Asian or Filipino uh, language, we, we use the term dapat. So when you say, like when you even have conversations with your friends, when you say, ito ang dapat, it's precisely because you are asserting uh, normativity there. So, uh, in a way, uh, you're asserting that uh, this should be the case. Another term for ought in, 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 in the English language would be should or uh, say uh, shall. No? Somehow it, uh, it uh, sounds like as if it is mandatory or prescribing or prescriptive. That is normative ethics. That is the concern of normative ethics. Now in our study or in our uh, discussion about ethical theories, uh, basically, uh, we are referring to the normative study of ethics. We are referring to the normative research in re normative research in ethics. So that that is that uh, you know, uh, and uh, one of the one of the theories that we will feature is or right now for this video is about consequentialism and utilitarianism. Um, consequentialism is the umbrella theory of utilitarianism and it explains that or it maintains 
that the morality of an action is determined solely by its non-moral uh, consequences. So take note of the word consequence or uh, consequences. So in, in, in consequentialism, uh, the moral worth of an action, uh, the moral value or uh, uh, yes, the value of an action is, is, not, uh, is not really important or significant because you will be looking into the consequences of the action. So that is important in consequentialism. And uh, it seems that uh, utilitarianism uh, appears to be a consequentialist theory, but it is uh, figured out as a consequentialist theory because utilitarianism is anchored on the doctrine that the only motives of human actions are pleasure and pain. The former prompting us to perform an act, the latter compelling us to avoid action. So meaning to say, Take, no, take note of, of the words uh, pleasure and pain. So, in utilitarianism, we are very much concerned about pleasure and pain as, uh, uh, as the motives of human action. So, if this is already bigger, figured out, then that would be the basis of our action. We act because we, we do an action because we want to achieve pleasure. Or that action gives us pleasure and we do not do the action precisely because it gives us pain. So we will find out what that means when we proceed. Alright? So that's the relationship between consequentialism and utilitarianism. Now, utilitarianism, if we are to uh, somehow introduce it, uh, think, of a, think of the case of wiretapping, for example. What is wiretapping? Uh, you know what wiretapping is. It is actually uh, putting some uh, surveillance on your uh, surveillance in your, uh, let us say, uh, cell phone or any communication device or let's say telephone uh, or any other. Or perhaps uh, that could that this would also include uh, 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 putting a video camera no, uh, on a place that you didn't on a place that you didn't know, let us say your room, that is basically wiretapping. Now, in our country, and uh, there, uh, this has been an issue, now, given that, no, uh, we may raise the question from the point of view of utilitarianism that on what instances is wiretapping morally permissible and on what instances is it not morally permissible? Meaning to say, from the point of view of utilitarianism, is it permissible or not? Is it uh, right or wrong? Now, in utilitarianism, you basically uh, calculate the costs and benefits in considering uh, the the permissibility of, of, of such an action, which is wiretapping. Now, in this case, uh, we give premium to the consequences of actions as the basis of morality. So, we look into uh, the pleasure and pain no, of... of, of, of uh, doing the act of wiretapping so basically and there are so many other uh, actions that we could uh, look at using the uh, point of view of utilitarianism but in that case basically that's the sense of utilitarianism now wiretapping from the perspective of utilitarianism wiretapping is uh, permissible uh, because doing so results in better public safety so Perhaps that could be a utilitarian point of view, no? And uh, this is basically arguing in the utilitarian way because some individual rights can be sacrificed for the sake of the greater happiness of the many. So later on, you will figure out what do we mean by these terms such as uh, uh, sacrificing the rights and uh, of, of, of the minority in favor of the majority or... Uh, in the terminology of uh, utilitarianism, this is sacrificing for the greater happiness of the many. So, that's basically the perspective of utilitarianism. Uh, just uh, an example of, of a particular action that is analyzed from the point of view of utilitarianism. Now, let us uh, formally define uh, utilitarianism. Utilitarianism is an ethical theory that argues for the goodness of pleasure and the determination of right behavior based on the usefulness of the action's consequences. 
So take word of uh, the term usefulness. Usefulness of the action's consequences. So in this case, just like what we have said a while ago, um, we are concerned with uh, uh, the pleasure or pain uh, that we can get from, from an action. In other words, we are concerned about usefulness. So in that case, usefulness means uh, obviously if, if there is pleasure we can get from the action, there is uh, usefulness. If, if there is none, then it's not useful. Uh, later on, later I will tell you about more on this uh, when we refer to usefulness as the principle of utility. Now, utilitarianism definition, in addition to that, it claims that one's actions and behavior are good in as much as they are directed towards the experience of the greatest pleasure or pain for the greatest number of persons. So, uh, I, 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 said it, I said this a while ago. So, they are directed toward the experience of the greatest pleasure over pain for the greatest number of uh, persons. So, usefulness. Uh, usefulness is basically referring to utility. So, what is utility? It refers to the usefulness of the consequences of one's action and behavior. So, as a consequentialist theory, we look at the consequences and why... When we say consequences, we look at the pleasure and pain we get from the action, right? So, uh, and, uh, in utilitarianism, it is important to look in to analyze the action whether it is useful or not. Meaning to say, is there pleasure we can get from it, or is there is only pain that we can get from it? Uh, that's basically what we mean by utility, All right? Now, uh, two of the foremost uh, utilitarian thinkers are uh, Jeremy Bentham and John Stuart Mill. So, they are two foremost utilitarian thinkers and whose system of ethics emphasizes the consequences of actions. So, that's why they're called uh, their versions are called uh, 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 consequence, consequentialist. Right? Which means that the goodness and badness of an action is based on whether it is useful in contributing to a specific purpose for the greatest number of people. So, we've been repeating this, no? Uh, the greatest, uh, the greatest good for the greatest, for the greatest or the greater number of people. That is a way of, of, of thinking, no? In utilitarianism. Uh, so, in utilitarianism, you look at the action, uh, you look at the consequences of the action, you look at the action whether it's producing happiness or not, and if it's producing happiness, if if it's producing pleasure rather, uh, rather than pain, then it is something that is ought to be pursued as an action. So that is uh, basically it, no, for for Jeremy Bentham and John Stuart Mill. Now let us uh, look closely into uh, Jeremy Bentham's uh, utilitarianism. So, in Bentham's utilitarianism, the rightness and wrongness of an action has to be judged by its consequences and by the ability of the act to produce pleasure or remove pain. An action that produces the mixture of pleasure and pain has to be judged according to the quantity of pleasure or pain Whichever is greater will determine the moral character of the action. So, in other words, uh, Bentham's utilitarianism is more concerned about quantity of pleasure or pain. So, if we look into an action, does it produce? Does, does it uh, have the consequence of pleasure or pain? So, if it's if there is much pleasure there, then that action is or has to be done or pursued or ought to be done or pursued. Okay, that's 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 what uh, 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 Bentham's utilitarianism is saying. Now, whichever is greater, then that will be the moral character of the action. Meaning to say, that action is pursuable. Now, Bentham calls the property of any act uh, that produces pleasure of happiness as utility, like what I mentioned a while ago. So, hence, the theory utilitarianism. So, in other words. 
utilitarianism you you take the root word of utilitarianism ut utility so what is utility again usefulness what is usefulness uh, whether the action uh, produces pleasure or pain as consequences uh, if it produces pleasure then that should be pursued that is utility right so what is this uh, principle of utility no the principle of utility, uh, we have here some items. Uh, this explains that our actions are go governed by 